So I want you to go with me to the book of Acts. Keep keep playing. Thank you, Bruce. Just keep playing that beautiful instrument. So Acts 19. This is a message that um, is for lovers of Jesus. Mm. Only only lovers of Jesus will really enjoy this <laughs> this message. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Now Ephesus, by the way, is... Western Turkey, I've actually I've been there. It's a beautiful part of the world. And a very uh, major city of the Roman Empire at the time. And here is Paul in this city called Ephesus. Mm -hmm. And what an amazing question he begins with. Have you received the Holy Ghost? That's all he wanted to know. Because he knew that is the secret to knowing the Lord. Because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot. Mm -hmm. So when, when we talk about the fullness of the Spirit, we're talking about way more than just gifts. So <clears throat> this happened, by the way. This question took place, believe it or not, 20 years after Pentecost. So 20 years have passed by, and here are men and women that hadn't heard about the Lord's giving us the Holy Spirit. And, and Paul is asking these 20 men, have you received the Holy Spirit since mm -hmm. you believed? Yeah. And, and what a very shocking answer they yeah. said. We don't know who you're talking about, right. basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know who you mean. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. Yes, sir. That's what they because said. Because somehow they didn't understand that uh, you are who you are because of your birth. When was the church born? The church was born on the day of Pentecost. The church was born when the Holy Spirit came. So a tree grows according to its seed, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. A tree becomes what the seed is. Mm -hmm. A church becomes what we had begun with. Sure, you're right. Mm -hmm. Our birth is what makes us who we are. Yes. Even in the natural. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to ask many of you, do you know the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Now you may say uh, yes. And I may ask you, well, how do you know? Oh, I speak in tongues. That's not the, the, the answer that God's word tells us it's proof. Now, some people don't like that I said that because they believe that tongues is the proof I have the Holy Spirit. No, no. Tongues is the proof you have his power, but not him. Very, very big difference between receiving the Holy Spirit and being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me ask you a question. Did Moses speak in tongues? Did Elijah speak in tongues? Did David speak in tongues? We have no evidence and no record that says so. Did Jesus speak in tongues? No. Did they know the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. So knowing the Holy, the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with the gifts. It has to do with the person of the Holy Spirit. So I'm talking to people now who may not 
see eye to eye with me on the gifts. I have many friends, many Southern Baptist pastors my, are my friends, who don't see eye to eye with me on healings, the way we believe in healings. They do believe in healings. They do believe that, you know, if you anoint them with oil. I've had pastors tell me that, uh, Southern Baptist pastors. Well, they said, well, Benny, we do believe God heals, but we, we don't believe that uh, they are healed in their seats. They, we, we, we have to anoint them with oil. So, well, but God is bigger than that. And I'll, I'll remind them about when Peter, in, uh, in Jerusalem, how yeah. his, his shadow, shadow healed the sick. So he, he didn't you know, anoint yeah. them with oil. But anyways, that's, uh, that's uh, not a very important point that should bring division with anybody. But still, still, they all believe the Holy Spirit is a person. Mm -hmm. Every Baptist, every Baptist pastor I ever talked to, every Baptist person who are very dear friends to me. We even have staff members who are Baptists. Pe people don't know that, but we actually do. But they all know and love the Holy Spirit. So when Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Yes, later. He prayed for that they would be baptized. We have it in that beautiful chapter and so on. But the question is, without knowing the Holy Spirit, we cannot know the Lord, and we cannot have the fullness of the Holy Spirit without that. Mm -hmm. So a healthy Christian and a healthy Christian life is not healthy without the presence mm -hmm. and the power of the Holy Spirit being in that life. Yes. Yeah. The Lord commanded his disciples not to even rest or leave Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He said, until they had received the Holy Spirit yeah. for themselves. Yes. And Paul, think about this, will you? Paul the apostle saw the Lord on the road to Damascus. But still, God sent Ananias to lay hands on him, mm. and he received the Holy Spirit when Ananias laid hands mm -hmm. on him. Mm -hmm. So even though he, he had that vision on the road to Damascus, even though he heard the Lord's voice, Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? And we know what happened to me, even fell under the power of God on the road. He said, who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus that you persecute. That still did not bring him the fullness of the Holy Spirit till Ananias laid hands on him. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people sometimes kind of, um, they, they cannot see, uh, seem to put a difference between the person and the power. Uh -huh. The person and the power. When, when Ananias laid, laid hands on Paul, that's when the Holy Spirit came upon him. That's when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We have no record of him getting saved or accepting Jesus on the road to Damascus. We have no record of him repenting and saying sorry for all I've done. It could have happened, but it doesn't say so. All it says is that Ananias comes, and then Ananias says, the Lord now will cleanse you, mm -hmm. receive the Holy Spirit. And that's when he got saved. And that's when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's when he, he was empowered. And sometimes the experience, all three happen at the same time. In my case, when I was born again, I did not know much about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. All I can tell you is, he was more real to me when I was saved than this room, more real to myself. It was two weeks later than a man named Bob Tanman said, one day, he said, do you speak in tongues yet? I said, no. What is that? I did not even know about it. I had heard about it. I even heard them pray in tongues, but I didn't really know how I'm going to receive. He said, why not? I said, well, I don't know. He said, why don't you ask the Lord? 
All right, I will. It was two weeks later I got on my knees in my bedroom in Canada, in Toronto, and asked the Lord to empower me with the Holy Spirit. I will never forget that moment as long as I live. Mm, sure. I began praying in tongues. It exploded oh, out of me, up. and nobody laid hands on me. Nobody prayed for me. I just asked the Lord mm. in simplicity. Yeah, that's it. I could not stop that day praying in tongues. When the Lord yeah. filled me, it was like, a, like an explosion happened mm. in me, and I became very loud. Usually I'm not, and I wasn't back then. I was quite a very quiet person. I know you. some of you don't even believe that, but it's true. I was a very shy individual back then. <laughs> and I was praying. You don't believe that, do you? But it's a fact. See, he's, anyways, Pastor Dad is, because now he sees me how wild I am. But <laughs> when, when, when I was growing up, I was very quiet. Really? I, oh, I'm, oh, ask my brothers. They'll wow. tell you that. Mm. My whole family was shocked after I got saved. I changed so, you know, dramatically. They, my, they my, couldn't my. believe it was the same, my, my. same man. Yeah, my, exactly. My, my. See what God does for us. See? Huh? <laughs> But anyways, the thing is, you see the difference between salvation, receiving the Holy Spirit, and the baptism of yes. the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the Holy Spirit is what I'm talking I'm not talking today about the baptism mm -hmm. or, or the, the gifts. I'm talking about the fullness, mm. the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So, it says in, in Acts 2 and, and verse 4, and they were all filled That's with it. the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now, <clears throat> I want to just say something here. Um, there are two ways in which the Holy Spirit works in us. There are two ways in which he works in us, not with us, in, in us. us. Okay. Number one, mm -hmm. he convicts us. He brings us to the Lord, number one. Then we receive him as the abiding, indwelling person who assumes the responsibility for our whole inner being. Can I say it again? Yes. Okay. Two ways he works in us. Mm -hmm. Number one, convicting Jesus. us and bringing us to Jesus. Yeah. Secondly, he becomes the abiding, mm. the indwelling person in our life mm. who takes responsibility for our whole inner being. That's when the fullness happens. When he takes responsibility for my life. Yeah. First, he yeah. convicts me. That's it. And he brings me to the Lord and I'm saved. Secondly, he says to me, let me be that indwelling person. Mm -hmm. Let me abide in you, Benny. <laughs> and I will be responsible for your life. Mm. Oh, my God. And I will guarantee that you'll make heaven. That is incredible. That's why we need him. Yeah. He that has begun a good work in us will, fill it, will fulfill it. Who, who is he? The Lord himself. So they were filled. The Lord, I'm sensing the presence of God while I'm talking. On the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Forget tongues. I, I'm not even getting into, in, in, into it. It says, okay, and they spoke in tongues. Fine, let's divide that from they received him. That's the, that's the important truth here. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, which means this is what brought a transformation to their life. They, at that moment, became entirely new. Brand new men and women. Uh. Think about the, the prior to that, they were hiding in the upper room, afraid of what the Pharisees may do to them. Mm. Now they became bold, mm. fearless. 
and more than that. So what the Lord, Jesus, I worship you for this. When the Lord, Jesus, was on earth, think that he taught them, he trained them as his disciples. But he was still external. He was still the external Jesus. So he stood outside of them, seeking to work with them through his word, through his personal influence. But that is not enough. So the Lord himself, Jesus on earth, taught his disciples, trained his, his disciples, but he was outside of them. He was from the outside seeking to work with them, could not work in them yet. You see the difference? Yes, sir. Before the Holy Spirit came, Jesus was the external Christ. Mm -hmm. Think about using the word, using his influence. This is the Son of God we're talking about. And you think that would be enough to change these men? No. Because he was outside of them, he was using his word, his personal influence, but it was not enough because even with all that, they still did not understand a lot of what he said to them. Mm. So, but when the Holy Spirit came, oh. and he came as the indwelling mm -hmm. Christ, so Jesus, before the Holy Spirit came, was the external Christ. Mm -hmm. Now the Holy Spirit comes and fills them, and Jesus becomes the indwelling Ooh. Christ. <laughs> That's what makes it difference. Yes, yes, yes. And now Jesus becomes, listen to this, he becomes the life of their life. Mm. The life of their life. Mm. Thank you, Lord. So the one they saw in the flesh, now I'm going real slow here because I don't want to say too much too fast and somebody miss it. So good. There's a lot of you listening. So instead of being the outward redeemer, no, no, Lord. The one they had seen, the one they had heard, the one they saw and touched in the flesh, now they received through the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and now his heavenly glory mm. I dwelled in them. Now his heavenly glory in came into them. Ah. Think they saw his glory, okay, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Not enough. Now he comes and brings that heavenly, heavenly glory inside of them. Inside of them. <laughs> yes. So instead of an outward Jesus... Now they, they receive the inward Jesus with them and in them. <laughs> not just with them, with them and in them. The with them was not canceled. Now the with them and in them united together. Because <laughs> he's still with us. Yeah. Because he said, I am with you always. Mm -hmm. He said, I am with you always. So Jesus is still with us. But more than that, he's also in, in us. Because he said, I shall never leave you or forsake you. I am yes. with you always. Uh -huh. Jesus was very clear on that. He said, I am with you. And in you. So when you say, Jesus is in me, don't forget, he didn't cancel with you. Mm. It's still there. Yes, sir. Because it says so. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Okay. Now, Jesus could have said, 
Well, I am with you till I send the Holy Spirit. No, oh, he didn't say that. He didn't say, I'm with you until the Holy Spirit comes. He said, I'm with you always. Always. So I'm with you and I'm in, in you, you now. It's the in you that brought the fullness. Ah. It's the in you that now changed them completely. Mm -hmm. So think about what Jesus said. Yes. All right, let's go to John. And I'm going to read verse 14. We need, you know, we're going to have a glorious healing time in, in just a little bit. But this is why I wanted to teach on this because we need, I need this. I need to be reminded. We need the fullness of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. more than ever. Mm. So the, the Lord says, in John 14, 18, I will not leave you comfortless or as orphans. I will come to you. That's awesome. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. And then look at verse 20. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, ah. and I in you. Yeah. What day? the day I will come to you. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That happened when the Holy Spirit filled them. Then he says, at that day, at that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me and I in you. Mm, there it is. It's incredible. All right. So, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So now the Lord comes through the Holy Spirit, and they went through a complete change on that day of Pentecost. You know, sadly today, many many Christians know the, know the Lord as the external the Lord, mm. as the external Lord yeah. and Christ. Yeah. But there is no power and no change in their life, yeah. but when the Lord becomes the indwelling Lord, that's when the change comes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's a daily walk. Yes. It's a daily surrender. Okay. This may be a little difficult for some people to get it, but I will be really clear and slow to explain it. And I know some people don't maybe agree with this but I've been in the faith long enough to know what I'm saying and I can pro prove it from the word that it's fact we need a fresh in feeling every day mm, I believe it pastor yeah we need the Holy Spirit to fill us every yeah, single day of our it. lives yes that's what keeps us full. That's Amen. what keeps the fullness. That's what keeps us empowered. They were filled in Acts 2. They were filled again in Acts 4. Yeah. And Paul says, be filled with the Holy Ghost in Ephesians 5 to believers. Mm -hmm. And what he means by filled is very important. Now, behind me here, is a is a cup half full with water. That's not what the Greek word means by filled. So when we read Ephesians 5:18, be filled with the Holy Spirit, speak into yourselves in psalms and, and, and in hymns, so forth. Make him meld in your hearts unto the Lord, submitting yourselves to each other. It doesn't mean full like a glass full. The, the Greek word is full like the sails of a, an ancient ship are filled with wind. He used that Greek word that implied sails full, mm. not glasses full. Uh. So when, when, when you fill a, a, a glass or cup or whatever with water, well, eventually you'll drink it, it'll be gone. And there's not much that, uh, there's no action here. There's only 
results if you drink it, that you quench your thirst, and so on. But when the sails are full of wind, the whole ship moves. Yeah. There is change, there's action, there's change in location, there's change in speed, and on and on. Yes. That's what full means. And we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit yeah. every single day. Yeah. Because it's a daily infilling. I will never forget when I went to see Catherine Kuhlman the first time. And uh, Maggie Hartner, I did not know it at the time. Maggie was Catherine's right-hand lady. Someone on our bus was talking to her. And they told us on the bus what she said to them. She said, Miss Kuhlman would say, be filled daily. Mm. And she herself later, I heard her say, I, she, she, she would say, I can't wait to, to get on that platform to get filled again. That's what happened to me in those crusades. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Pastor Dan, I promise you, and Bruce remembers those days, I would get so full, I, I just wanted to go home. Uh, I believe you. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would start crying and say, Jesus, please, don't let me come down the, from, from the mountain. I, I want to go now. <laughs> don't, don't let me lose this moment. <laughs> and I was weeping and crying. I would look at Don Boss, who was one of the greatest sound men I think that ever lived. He's in heaven now. He passed away young, said he was the greatest sound man ever worked with me, named Don Boss. Oh. And Don was just tears with flowing down his face. Mm -hmm. And I look at Cheryl Pump behind me, tears. And Jim Sonero, and Bruce, and, and all of us. Because the presence of God was just so yeah. rich. Yeah. And all you wanted to do is go home. I mean home to heaven. Not home to home, you know. <laughs> Forget it. To be with the with the Lord. And I would say, please, dear, dear Jesus, don't 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 leave us. And you're talking about fullness? Yes. We lived in it. But now, every day, when you open your Bible and you talk to the to the Lord. I've had experiences, I know some people may not believe this, greater than the platforms. Oh, yes. In my room right here. Oh, yes. Greater, greater. And especially lately, it's been quite amazing. Yeah. I don't want to, this is something that is too sacred to talk about for me. But you talk about the infilling of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> ah. Let me show you. In verse 15 through, through 17, the Lord says, If you love me, keep my commandments. my commandments. And I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter yes. that he may abide with you forever. Yes. And abide with you has nothing to do with gifts because the gifts don't abide. They come and they go. Uh. But he stays. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because the world seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. Get me back on this camera, guys. But you know him, for, he, for you know him, he dwelleth with you, shall be in you. What a blessed promise. Mm -hmm. So, the tree, like I said earlier, a tree lives according to the nature of the seed from which it grew, Right? Every living being is always guided and governed by the nature which it receives at birth. Ah, right. I'm going to repeat that. Every living being is guided and governed by the nature of the seed. Mm -hmm. By the nature in which it was born. Mm -hmm. The church was born on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we should not rest until we understand and receive and experience what happened on that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. Since the church was born on, on the day of Pentecost, we should, not, we, we should not rest until, until we understand and receive yeah. 
and experience yes. what happened yes. on that day. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. First, let's let's look at some things that I think are important. Uh, the disciples, I think, are our examples. What enabled them? Why did they become who they became? So, what enabled them to become the recipients first of this blessed person? And what made them acceptable vessels for God's habitation? Mm. What is it? All right, number one. Would you lift your hands to heaven a second? Lord, as I go into this part of the teaching, we need you, Lord. And I'm asking you to, to help your people, blessed Holy Spirit, to see this, this important part of the message clearly in the name of Jesus. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay. So, what enabled them to receive? the Holy Spirit, and what made them acceptable vessels in the sight of God to receive his habitation. Mm -hmm. okay. Number one. Now I think this is one of the most powerful and most, please keep the camera here on me. Okay, I'm talking to the camera, not on the side, right here. Okay. First, what is so important and this point is really difficult to explain without kind of slowing down a little bit and talking about things that have happened maybe to all of us. They were deeply attached to Jesus. Mm, yes. Before the Holy Spirit yes. came. Yes. So they had already... They had already become so, so attached to him and became so close to him. Yes. And began to develop a personal relationship before their salvation. Mm. So... Um, I think this is a very important condition that we have got to experience ourselves. Now think about yeah. um, what we could receive and here we are born again if we develop that intimacy. Mm. Wow, yeah. They developed it before salvation. Mm -hmm. They became attached to him before salvation. Yeah. And he himself became attached to them. He actually desired, he, he wanted and he desired to be attached to them. He became knit with them and they became knit with yeah. him, except one, mm -hmm. Judas. Yeah. Because I think this is so important. It's like their hearts were occupied with Jesus of mm -hmm. Nazareth. Mm -hmm. They could not change that. It was growing in them daily. Every experience brought them closer to him in that relationship, in that amazing attachment that they began to experience with him. You know, we got attached to people. I was very attached to my mom, many of you are. I'm, I'm attached to my children today. Sure. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you become attached to just one of them or two of them in a special way. We can't explain why. Mm -hmm. You know, our kids say, well, you love her more than me and you love him more than me. And well, that's not so because that's not possible to love 
a child more than the other, but I've always said that the heart has many chambers. <laughs> you know, the heart has many chambers. One chamber belongs to your mom, and one to your dad, and one to your wife, one to your, this child, one to this child. Just many, the heart is capable of having many chambers. Okay? Uh, but we become attached as human beings with family and sure. even friends. Sure. That's just the way we are made. Yes. They chose to become attached to Jesus mm. of Nazareth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is something every one of us can begin with today. Yeah. And how do we become attached with him? Quite simple. Do what they did. Spend time with him. That's it. They, they were with him day, day after day. They were with him day and night. Yeah. I love the portion where it says that how Jesus, I was just reading it, how the Lord woke up before the sun rose. And after the sun rose, they all came looking for him. His disciples came, came looking for him. He kind of wanted to be alone and they were sleeping, you know. They became so attached to him. Uh, this morning I was reading how Peter denied the Lord, you know, and but he was so attached to him that he wept after he denied him. There was a connection there when Jesus looked at him. You know, it says that how when, when, when he says, I don't know the man. Yeah. And the Lord turned and looked at him and Peter looked at him. And the second he, he saw him, he just cried very, yeah. with such pain. Yeah. Just because Jesus looked, you see that connection, connection so powerful. That's it. That attachment was so powerful. Even though he denied him, the, the attachment did not break. Yeah. Mm. That's, what is, that's why Jesus did not rebuke him for denying him. Yeah. Because he looked at the attachment. Mm. There was no attachment be, between Saul and God, but there was one between David and God. Wow. That attachment David had with the Lord was the reason why Nathan said, the Lord has forgiven your sin already, even before you say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yet Saul had no attachment with God. That's something. God rejected him. Mm -hmm. Think about the attachment with Moses on the Lord, that God was so angry to destroy Israel, and Moses so close to say, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's real <laughs> yeah, attachment. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, Lord, listen to yeah. me now. You can't do this. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's something. Oh, that's something. Yeah. That's something. I had a pastor on staff named Kent Maddox. I'm still very close to him to this day. And we got so close when we were younger. We still are, but back, back then was a whole different day. And one day I was really angry. I will never forget that as long as I live. Some, some of our staff who answered the phones were upstairs, this is where OCC is today. We had the phone center up, up top back then. Now my children use that same building in Orlando. I came out of that back area where the overflow was fuming because I had just been told how some of the staff messed up on the calls and there was a lot of problems going on that day with the phones and it just, I don't want to get back into it. But I was young in those days, okay, I'm, I'm much nicer now, I'm much softer, <laughs> okay. But I was about to go and just rebuke him up there for messing up. Right. And he grabbed me, first time in my life anybody did that with me. He grabbed me, come here, I'll show you. Oh my, oh my. Stand right here. Be careful, Pastor. No, no, because see, it's, it's about what I'm talking about. Yeah. He and I became close enough that he grabbed me by, 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 by this, he said, you're not going nowhere. And I'm thinking, who are you to tell me I'm not going nowhere, you know? He said, if you go up there right now and rebuke him, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I just stopped. Thank God. He said, there are people, and they won't understand it. He said, you're too, you're too angry now. He said, this is not the time to go rebuke anybody. He was right. And he was right. He was right. And I thanked him later. Yes. But nobody would have that kind of boldness without being close. Yeah. Yeah, connected. Yeah. Huh? Connected. Connected, yeah. That's it. He had the boldness because of closeness. Imagine 
telling a man of God, you, you, you're not going to do this. Okay? But, and, and he told me later, he said he took a risk. He wasn't sure if I would accept that. But I calmed right down. I said, you're right, and we went on. And that was a very wise thing he did. But the thing that is important is Moses was so close to God to say to him, no, Can, you're not wow, going to wow. destroy the Connected. nation. What will the Egyptians say wow. about you? Right. You brought us out here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And God just heard that man. Yeah. That shows attachment. That really that does. That shows closeness. That really does. That shows relationship. That really does. They were that close. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say something you may, you may have never thought of in this way before. Why would Peter rebuke Jesus? What gave him the right to say, no, you're not going to go to that cross? And Jesus rebuked him. Get, get behind me, Satan. Okay, on one hand, he was totally off. On one hand, he was, he was wrong. And the Lord rebuked him sharply. I would not want the Lord to call me Satan. I, I, not one of us would want the Lord to call us Satan. Okay? But Peter had enough confidence Isn't that something? in his closeness wow. to Jesus wow. that he knew I can say that even though I'm off, <laughs> even though I'm wrong. <laughs> and boy, was he ever. <laughs> but notice how close he was to the Lord throughout the entire time. Mm -hmm. And notice how close Jesus was. The connection. In, in Gethsemane. And it's only recorded in Mark. It's not in the other Gospels like that. Because in the Gospels it said, could you not tear with me? Mark says, Peter, could you not mm -hmm. tear with me? Man. That he focused on Peter when he was in, in, in need. He said, Peter. Could you? He called for Peter. Yeah. In wow. his most painful moment, he called for Peter. Mm. And who ran and came and stood there by the fire to warm himself up? It was so cold. Peter. And then they came and said, oh, you were with him. I don't know the man. Yet his heart was in pain when he said those words. And that's why later when Jesus rose from the dead on the Sea of Galilee, he did not say, you bad boy, you rebuked me. What did he say? Do you love me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's all he said. Do you love me, Peter? You see that connection I'm talking about? Do you love me? They were deeply attached to him. Whether Peter, whether John, whether James, even Mark. Yes. And others. And Mark was not one that was mentioned to us in the Gospels, except we know his Gospel, and we know that he was probably the young man who ran away naked from Gethsemane that night. Don't you remember what it says in the book of Mark, that one young man came with a sheet, and they took the sheet off, and he ran home? Most likely it was him, because he, he, he loved the Lord so much, you probably heard that he, he, they're, they're about to take him, and he got, you know, got got up out of bed and didn't have enough time to put clothes. He just took the sheet with him. Attached. Yeah. Attached. Connected. Mm. They were all attached to him. Even yeah. those who are not known to us or were not known to us back then, we, had, we hear about their names here and there in the epistles. All right. The apostles, the disciples attached him. That's what gave them that condition where they could be receivers, recipients of the fullness. Huh. That's they, it. Huh? That's it. That's it. That's the, it. The, the attachment prepared them for the fullness. Woo! Jeez. So That's... here, today you're hearing new things like, uh, is it going to say pray more and fast? No. Get close. Get close. Be attached to him. And then daily he'll fill you with that fullness. You won't even have to ask. I promise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you know what? They, they became occupied with him. Yeah. He was their occupation. Yes. Day and night. Now, secondly, this is important. That attachment to him 
caused them to what? They left all and followed him. Mm. They heard what he said in, John, uh, in Luke 14, 33. Whosoever he be of you that forsaken not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Franklin Graham was talking to the students of uh, Liberty University. And I saw that part on YouTube a little while ago. And I was so touched by, by, by what Franklin talked about. And how, and he talked about how when, when the Lord was with the disciples and they were fishing and caught so much fish, they filled many, they filled more than one boat. And how they had fished all night and caught nothing. And then he came and said, but go and launch out. And at, they said, Lord, at your word, we'll do it. We've been, you know, we've told all night, caught nothing, but at your word, we're going to go and do it. And then so, so much fish, they caught so much fish that the, that the boats began to actually go down. <laughs> And then when, when they got to shore, he pointed out to the fact that they left all mm. and followed him. You see. And Franklin said something powerful. He said they were so obedient, and I don't remember every word he used, but basically your average person would, would, would have said, let's sell that, that fish yeah. first yeah. and then follow him. Yeah. Look how much, look how much fish we have. We, this is our business. We are fishermen. Yeah. Yeah. And they caught more fish on yeah. that night than probably in yeah. a long time. First things first. Yeah. But they did not they did. think about the business. Woo. They did not think about how much fish they're going to walk away from. Woo. And thank you, Franklin Graham, for saying that. My, my, my. Because that blessed me a lot when Powerful. I would say that. And I thought, wow, he's right. Yeah. And I opened my Bible and there it was, even though I've read it before. <laughs> they left all the fish and all the boats. Yeah, I love and it. followed him. I love it. You cannot do that if you're not attached to the Lord. Yeah, that's well true. And that was before salvation. Isn't that something? Before salvation. They connected. Wow. Wow. So now listen carefully. The two worlds that we are living in. Oh, we are living in the spiritual, we're living in the natural. Each one of us is living in two worlds at all times. And we stand between these worlds who are in direct conflict, one with, with the other. And the world of the flesh so think about this, two worlds, we stand between both. Mm -hmm. These two worlds, spiritual and natural, are at war, mm -hmm. conflict. The world, flesh world, has a lot of influence over us, mm -hmm. more than you realize. That's why the Lord tells us to pull away from it, to withdraw from it. That's why we are told to seek the, the, the heavenly. And we are to seek the, 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 the heavenly with, a, with, with hearts that are not divided between both. Mm. Oh. Yeah. We are to seek the, the heavenly with hearts that are not in both worlds. Oh. Our hearts must belong to the Lord. There it is. So you, you're living in these worlds, one natural and one spiritual, and they're both at war, and you're in the middle of it. And Jesus said, pull away from the, from the world and seek and set your affections on my world, heavenly world. Mm -hmm. But make sure your heart is not divided. Because in his word, the Lord taught us and told us that without sacrifice, without separation from the world, we cannot receive his fullness. Yeah. So they left all. Yeah. They were wow. attached, then they left all, the world with it, everything. Everything. Because without sacrifice, mm. 
without separation Ooh. from the world, we can never receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Uh, wow. Never. Yeah. So, mm. and may I add, and this is going to be a little tough for some people to understand, we have to separate from worldly Christians. Mm. Not only from the world, but those who call themselves believers and are worldly should not be around us because oh. they'll pull us back into that world yeah. with a religious face, mm. with a Christian name that isn't real because a true Christian represents heaven, not the world. Help us, God. Huh? Help us, God. Yeah. Now, so number one, they were attached to the Lord. Number one, they left. Uh, number two, they left all to follow him, no matter what it was. And number three. Number three, they recognized who the enemy is. Sure. Because you and I have two enemies. Who are they? The devil and self. The devil is on the outside and self is on the inside. Is it true? And the one on the inside is more dangerous than the one on the outside. Oh, that's the truth. That's the so truth. they recognized who the enemy was. And they said, okay, we apostles and we disciples have two enemies. One called the devil Satan mm -hmm. and one called self. Self, yeah. And the devil is outside of me and self is inside of me. And the one inside of me is the most dangerous one of all. <laughs> yeah. So, so. It is possible, it is possible to say, I am forsaking the world and retain self. Oh, wow, yeah. It is possible to say, I'm going to forsake the world, keep. Mm. but I'm going to keep self. Wow. Mm. Because you know what? Who really has control over us? The world or self? Self. Self. Yeah, self. So people sometimes pull away from the world, and I've seen them in my part of the world. They live in, in monasteries in the desert. They're not even allowed to go out. You think about how many people, groups, different groups in different religions, want nothing to do with the world. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't set them free from self. Mm -hmm. I have, I grew up with monks who did not want to want have anything to do with the world, Franciscan monks, but they were full of themselves. Self. Isn't and I still self? remember them. Wow, wow, that's something. Oh, that's something, all right. Or you hear about the different groups in, in our own country yeah. who, who don't want to do anything with the world or yeah. even in Judaism, in, yeah. in Israel and other parts of, yeah. of the world. You know, it's, it's, it's a sin to drive a car. It's a sin to do this. It's a sin to do that. So you, let's live the way they lived 200 years ago mm -hmm. and leave the world. But self is still self. there. Self is still there. So who's more dangerous? Self. Self. Yeah. Mm. That's it. So... They understood that, that our biggest enemy is self within. Yes. So it's possible to forsake the world and retain and keep self. <laughs> That's what I believe Jesus meant when, when he said, if you do not forsake all, yeah. meaning self included, yeah. and follow me, you cannot be my sure. disciple. Sure. Okay. I think, let's go to Luke. I'm, I'm almost done because I'm really sensing the blessed anointing of God. And I'm sure you are precious people uh, listening and learning and I pray even enjoying. Oh, yes. Oh, my. So Luke 9, 23 through 26. And he said unto them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily not weekly, but daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. 
For what is a man advantaged if he gains the whole world yeah. and lose himself well, or be cast away? That's it. But then he made an amazing statement that now you put it together. Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if we do not do what he said earlier, deny self, follow the Lord, lose our life, gain his life, then we will not be ashamed yeah, of him. That's right. So those who are ashamed of the Lord, now we know, have not kept this. Mm, they have not obeyed wow. this. Deny mm. self, follow the Lord, right? Mm. Mm. So, number four. Number four, so remember what I said with number one, right? Okay. So number one, attached. That's very important. Thank you, Jesus. Cool. And that's the key really to everything I said so that's far. It. That's it. But here's it. number four. Number four is they not only received the promise that they would have the fullness of the Holy Spirit, but they held fast to it. So when Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem till you be endued with power, they received it and held it. Mm. They did not understand it, but they received it. Yeah, they did it. Did not understand it, but they held fast to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why? Even though they did not understand it, it took hold of them. Mm -hmm. The promise took hold of them. Yeah. They could not take hold of it till it took hold of them. <laughs> it took hold of them. Even though they didn't, they didn't really understand what he said. When the, when, when the Lord said, don't leave Jerusalem till you be endued with power. It took hold of them. Wow. They believed his word. Yes. They believed his word before salvation. Isn't that something? They believed his word before the fullness came. Wow. <laughs> right. They laid aside everything and they waited for the fulfillment of what he promised. And waited 10 days. Yeah. I wonder how many would wait that huh. long. Right. Exactly. 10 days. Isn't that Not sad? 10 hours, 10 yeah. days. Right. And nights. It said they didn't leave the upper room. Wow. My, my. And today, so little is really known about yeah. that kind of waiting. Yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. All right. My, my. Now, Lord, help me bring this truth that I'm about to talk about as simply as I can. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4 and 5 says something powerful. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words yeah. of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but, but in the power of God. Power of God. So I'm still talk, talking about the, the same thing I just discussed. The, the, the promise, the promise took, took hold of them. Paul said something powerful to the church in Corinth. He spoke of two kinds of preaching and two kinds of faith. He says, and my speech, I'm, I'm there in verse 4, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but right. in the demonstrations of, yeah. the, of the spirit and power, meaning that there is a preaching which is full of human wisdom. There is a preaching full of the demonstrations of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And then verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, mm -hmm. but in the power of God, meaning that faith also can be wisdom, humanly, human wisdom, faith called faith, but it's only wisdom of man. And there is a faith which stands on the promise of God. Mm. So we ought to understand there are two kinds of preaching and two kinds of faith. There's a preaching full of man's wisdom, a preaching full of the demonstration of the spirit. There's a faith that relies on, on human wisdom and a faith that relies on the Bible. Mm. Okay. So today, when you hear somebody preaching, you have to say to yourself, is he speaking from human wisdom or is he speaking with the power of God? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. 
The reason, the reason there's so much weakness and sin in the church today is because people cannot discern between human wisdom and spiritual demonstrations. Or, or human faith and spiritual faith. Because Paul says both. Because he said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man. Yeah, but, yeah. So what preaching is affecting your life and what oh. faith is, is affecting Ooh. your life? Is it from human origin Jesus. or heaven? Jesus. And if it is from human origin, then we know why so many people today in the church are weak. Well, there it is. And living in sin. There it is. Yeah. So we have to recognize that nothing can restore us to the power and fullness of the Lord until and unless we return to a life full of what? Pentecost. Back to our origin. Yeah. Yeah. Because the more deeply we feel our emptiness and deficiency, the more we desire it. And that's why the Lord said we have to forsake all and follow Him. So, The problem really is self. That's it. The reason they cannot find it is self. Our individual self, our self-seeking, self-confidence, self-pleasing, self-satisfaction, yeah. self, self, self has mm -hmm. kept us all, and many have, have kept many really yeah. empty. So the more we see God's power, ah, the more we are liberated from <laughs> self. I think it's high time now to say yes to the promise of God. Yeah. As many as are led are sons and daughters. <laughs> Wonderful, precious Wonderful, Jesus. Precious Jesus. I'm, I'm done, but I want to just finish by saying this. The Lord has promised us fullness in Ezekiel 36. He promised fullness to all of his children. But look at the fullness that he means before I'm done. I used to preach on this back years ago. Mm -hmm. And I would point out to one thing in verse, uh, from verse 25 through 27. Then, now this is fullness. This is the life of fullness. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Mm -hmm. You shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart will I give you, a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I'll give you a heart of flesh. <sighs> and I will put my spirit within you and cause you cause you to walk in my statutes. Uh, yeah. I will put my spirit within you and ye shall keep my judgments yeah. and do them. Mm. Now that's fullness. That is. When God takes over. Remember what I said earlier? He lives his life in our life. Yeah. He becomes the indwelling glory. He becomes the indwelling Christ. Mm -hmm in us so what's the answer let jesus reign and rule huh. in your life and in my us. life yeah in us. let there be nothing in which he does not rule oh, right. let him be everything oh, let him have everything uh. that he might fill everything right. what else? What with himself and when this happens then you will have all the fullness yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And now lift your hands because I want to pray that God will fill you right now with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Lift your hands to heaven. And just gently on the instrument, Bruce, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. And when we say in this place, we mean in our hearts. Lord, fill them afresh. 
fill every one of them. Fill every one of them. Empower every one of them. In the glorious, matchless name of Jesus. I give you the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, there's such a an, an heavy anointing here. There's strong in this room. Now, listen, people of God, I, I, I don't know how long I've been going, but it's been for a while now, it looks like. But I'm not done yet because I want to I wanna talk to you for the next few moments. So I'm going to ask you to stay with me for just a little, okay? Because saints... I want to talk to you about something very, very important. And you can take your seat, and you can take your seat. I want to just spend a few moments with you. Thank you, Lord. And I want to talk to you about the reason God has promised us prosperity and how to receive our prosperity. Yeah. So this is really important that we really get this. Because with every move of God, he sends prosperity. Don't be afraid to prosper. Yeah. Okay? Don't be afraid to prosper. Yeah. Because prosperity is God's promise to us. Yeah. That's God's promise to That's all of us. True. And with every move of God, we see prosperity. Three things always happen together in the Bible. They were saved. Healed, prospered. Yes. When you go to the book of Exodus, they came out of Egypt, That's salvation. It. God yeah. healed all of them, and they received the wealth of the Egyptians all at the same time. Yeah. In the book of Acts, in Acts 2, they got saved, then they got healed, and then in Acts 4, they prospered. That's right. It said none lacked among them. If you look at that order, it's throughout the Bible. Yeah, it is. So salvation came, Acts 2. Healings came, Acts 3. Prosperity came, Acts 4. And so we have to believe now that prosperity is on the way because we are seeing those two things that I mentioned already happening. There is a new move of God with people getting saved, especially young people today. Yeah. Young people are coming to the Lord by the hundreds of thousands throughout the world. The second thing, they're getting healed. Yes. I'm seeing it firsthand. The young people are praying for the young people who are getting healed. It's not just where the pastors are praying for the people. It's the young people praying with each other and seeing miracles. And I love seeing what, what God is doing today. It's amazing. The next thing now, I want you, and especially you young people, that maybe have not heard the message, that prosperity is a part of this move of God. That's right. Why? To finance the move. That's it. To keep it going. That's it. Okay. Why did God bless Israel in, 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 when they came out of Egypt? To keep them for 40 years yeah. and to build a tabernacle. Right. He kept them for 40 years mm -hmm. with what they came out with. Mm -hmm. Not just the money. Think about all the clothing they came out with. That's it. That God kept all the clothing new. The cattle that came out with them multiplied, yeah. Yeah. and so on. But then they built this tabernacle. That's the whole reason for prosperity, to build God's That's it. kingdom. That's it. To build the yeah. tabernacle of God. Why would God give them the wealth of Egypt? To yeah. build a tabernacle. To build them a habitation. Today, God wants us to prosper to build him a, a habitation, yes. meaning the kingdom, yes, his, the gospel to be preached. People yes. coming into the church, yeah. building God a habitation. Yeah. Book of Acts. That's why. They got saved. They got healed. Now with the money, they were building the church. That's right. They were blessing the church. The church was growing because of men and women like Barnabas and, and others who sold their properties to give money to the church, the early church. And throughout the ages, with every move of God came prosperity. And I'm here telling you, there is coming 
another move of God oh. like we haven't seen before. Hallelujah. I had the most incredible prophecy yesterday. Give, 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 I mean, given to me I, I, out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it. Wow. My brother William called me. Mm -hmm. He gave me a word that lifted me to the heavens. Wow. Love him. And he said this. He said, Vena, the Lord spoke to me today that the Crusades are coming back <laughs> and you will ride another wave. <laughs> it will not be for long, but let God do it. Let God do it. And he said, what you don't understand is a lady called him right after that, right after God spoke to him. She said, tell your brother Benny. And she gave the same word. I didn't have to do it. I already knew it. I knew it when the wife of the president of Kenya, Kenya met with me a few days ago wow. and said, we want you to come to our country to hold a crusade in Nairobi. <laughs> with her was Robert Gayanja from Uganda. He said, we want you to come right after that. We're going to have two crusades at the end of January. Nairobi, Kenya, Kampala, Uganda. And they're saying a million people a night will be there. <laughs> My brother Willie didn't even know about that. And I told Marie Dawn, who was sitting right out here, I said, Marie, this will trigger doors. This is like the last move in my, in, in my ministry that I'm, I'm, I'm going to see. I've always wondered, why am I still alive? I've always wondered, like, why am I still here? I've, I've said to people uh, so many times, I paid my dues, you know? I said, I've done my job, I've paid my dues. But I guess I'm still here because there's still some reason that I should be around. Well, surely. And I always have, have thought young people, and I think that's a part of it. But when that precious woman flew in with her team from Kenya a few days ago, inviting me, the, the, the first lady of, of Kenya, the wife of the president of Kenya showed up here for 24 hours. She flew in on... Uh, uh, 8 a.m. a few days ago, left the next morning. She said, I came all the way with my people to invite you to come to our country. I have never had anyone do that. I've been invited by heads of state, but they never came to me. I had to wow. just get a letter from them. Wow. Many of them invited me over the years. And now this lady comes and the Lord spoke to me. He said, Get ready for another wave. <laughs> it will not last long. That's all he said. That's all I knew in my heart. And my brother William calls me and tells me that yesterday Isn't morning. That something? Oh, no, it's true. And you're going to be there. Whatever show it is. Oh, sir. You are going to be there. I told you already. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you know, God is doing something even with our ministry. Yeah. But he's doing it in your life. Dear God, Come on, I, I, I want to pray. I want to pray for you right now that God will do it in your life. Stretch your hands towards me that something new and fresh is coming to you, okay? In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray and I believe that a fresh move and a fresh anointing will come on your people. Those in ministry and those who are not in ministry, that you'll use them, Lord, mightily and use them in power, whether they're pastors or not. They are your people and your priests. You said in your word, we are kings and priests. We're all in the ministry, Lord, all of us. Use every one of them with a new unction, yes. with a new anointing, with a new door open over their life yes, in God. Jesus' name. Jesus. A heavenly door open for your glory. Amen and amen. And Lord, prosper them. Come on, yes, let's God. believe. Yes, prosper, God. Them. prosper them. God. Prosper them in Jesus', Jesus. mighty name. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what is, 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 is going to happen with, with this move? And I'm going to say that it will be financed supernaturally. Uh, yeah. I believe it will that, be Pastor. financed supernaturally. I believe that, Pastor. I, believe that. I had one crusade already that was paid for by the government. Where are you, Marie? Come here a second. What was that government in, in that Papua, Papua in Indonesia, they paid for a whole crusade. Oh the government the paid government. for the crusade, yeah. And I know it's going to happen again and again yes. and again. Yes, amen. And then God will take me home when, when, when he's done. But listen, prosperity, 
belongs to the righteous. Yes, yes, Pastor. I want you to say prosperity belongs to the righteous. Say it. Prosperity, prosperity belongs, belongs to the righteous. To, not the sinner, That's the righteous. Right. The because righteous. it says, in the house of the righteous is treasure. Proverbs 15, verse 6. Proverbs 22, we all know it. Prosperity belongs to the righteous. Yes. Now, we have to be faithful. We got to be faithful. A faithful man will abound with blessings, meaning prosperity is not an accident. Prosperity is a decision we make every day. Oh, that's good, Pastor. But it is true. It's true. Prosperity is a decision we make every day. Why? When we are faithful, we're making that decision. Yeah. With every faithful act, we're deciding that's to it. prosper. That's it. When we live righteously, that's a decision we make. I'm going to live righteously, meaning prosperity will come because prosperity belongs only to, to the, the righteous, righteous, not to the sinner. Uh, yeah. The Bible is very clear on that, very clear on that. Now listen to what the Bible says here. I'm going to read you one verse again. By humility and the fear of the Lord are what? Riches, honor, and life. Yeah. Proverbs 22, 4. When you are humble and fear the Lord, the results are riches, honor, and life. Riches, honor, and Meaning life. prosperity belongs to the righteous. Mm. Prosperity comes. When does it come? When we apply the laws of abundance. Mm -hmm. When we apply the laws of of abundance, the laws of increase. So it's not a matter of luck. It's yeah. a matter of obedience. When you That's apply it. the laws of God oh, oh, oh. and the laws of abundance, th 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 there'll be no way prosperity cannot come. That's right. It says there is, Proverbs 11, 24, there is that scatters, yet increase it. So here, one is scattering, applying the laws of abundance, and he's increasing. And there is another one who's holding back but ends up in poverty, who is not applying the law. Uh, yeah. Applying the law means you scatter the seed. That's it. So it's not an accident. It's a decision. That's it. It's not luck. It's obedience. That's it, right there. And when you obey the Lord, this is where you do not let conditions rule your sowing. <laughs> When you obey the Lord, when you are living a righteous life, conditions will not rule. Come God on, will rule. Come on, come on. So our, our sowing must not be controlled by conditions. That's it. It must be controlled by the word of the Lord, who said there is that scatters and it's always increasing. Yeah. There is another who's always keeping back and is always lacking. So we see very clearly, Ecclesiastes 11, it's a very powerful, I've shared this many times, but listen, listen here. In, when you read that chapter from verse 1 to 6, it's quite powerful. In verse 1 it says, cast your bread on the waters. That's in verse 1. In verse 2 it says, storms are coming. Mm -hmm. The winds will blow, the trees will fall. Then it says, don't look at it. Don't look at it. <laughs> don't you dare look at that. I'm paraphrasing verse 1 to 6, okay? So, cast your bread on the water, it'll come back. The storms are coming, don't look at them. Look at them. He that observes the wind will not sow. That's right. He that looks at the clouds will not reap because they are distracted by their conditions. Don't let conditions rule what mm. God tells you to do. And then it says this, you don't know how the wind blows. You don't know how the baby grows, right. nor do you know how the seed works. The ways of God. You don't know the ways of God. So the first part of that chapter is, cast your bread on the water. It'll come back for sure. Second section of that amazing portion is, storms are coming. Thirdly, don't look at them. If you look at them, you lose the harvest. So, oh, Jesus. Become their brother. But then he says something else. I love having this man with me. He's exciting. Then he says this. 
He says, listen, you don't, you don't even know how the wind blows. You don't know what's coming from the That's west, right. from the east, from the north. No, you from. don't know how it blows. Yeah. And you have no clue or idea how a baby grows in the womb of a mother. Nor do you know the ways of God, meaning you don't know how the seed that you plant in the ground produces such a harvest. Mm -hmm. And since we don't know how, we have only one job. Verse 6 says, sow your seed in the morning. Yeah. And plant your seed in the evening. Because you don't know which seed will release the harvest. You don't know which one will do the job. That's it. Sow your seed in the morning. Sow your seed in the evening. And let God do the rest. <laughs> and he'll do the rest. He will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And watch what God will do when you sow that seed. Dependent on his promise not on conditions or how smart you are or anybody else or how smart you invested your money. No, what God said. As he said, if you sow, you'll reap. He said, if you scatter that seed, it will increase. If you keep it back, nowhere. It's going to go nowhere. So, I love this portion in the Psalms because it also deals, by the way, it also deals with the resurrection of the Lord. This is a very powerful one. It has really a double application. They, I'm reading uh, Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. They that sow in tears will reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And this verse really talks about the gospel. Because the gospel is when the Lord came bearing precious seed, gave us the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he comes rejoicing and he rose from the dead. This is the garden tomb behind me, a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And the sheaves is the church. Yeah. But it also applies to one other thing. Whenever we sow in tears, we reap with joy. Mm. It's hard to sow. Sometimes you have to reach to the bottom of the, of the yeah. barrel to find it, yeah. the seed. But you sow that seed, and you'll be rejoicing with the harvest. I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. Lord, come on, let's believe. Yes, God. Lord, as they sow that seed now. Do it. As they sow that precious seed, let them reap the harvest. In the glorious God. name God. of Jesus. For your honor and glory, Lord, bless them with untold abundance, glorious abundance, in Jesus', in Jesus mighty name. name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Pardon for sin. Great is thy faithfulness. Pardon for sin. And a peace that endureth Thy own dear presence We wow. And now Help for today And bright hope for tomorrow Blessings All mine And ten thousand Besides Great is thy faith now listen, you sow your seed while I'm singing. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Now listen, I want to make sure our address is on the screen there, Matt. Make sure it's on the screen for them. Great is thy faithfulness. And you go ahead and just follow the instructions. Great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see sing it for me all I have needed thy hands have provided great is thy faithfulness O oh Lord unto me can you sing it again and just give it all you got great is Thy 
faithfulness. Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands, Lord, you've provided. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Hallelujah. Now listen, I want to pray that God will bring loved ones into the yes. kingdom of God. Lord, we agree that our loved ones will be saved. Thank you, Lord. That this is the year for their yes. salvation. Every one of them. We claim them for your yes, kingdom. Yes, God, we claim them. In the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Now listen, if you were healed, send me that report. Yes. And send me a prayer request. We can pray with you. Amen. That is at, for our email, benihin at benihin.org. Yes. And I'm going to see you again on Monday. Amen. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to minister something really powerful. Uh, life in Jesus. Mm, mm. What does it mean to have life in Jesus? Mm. Very powerful. Yes. God love you all. Thank you for uh, joining me. And